Hey everybody, Rhino here. Alright, we're going to do the season preview for the Arizona Coyotes today. And some people think that this could be a mediocre team. I personally don't see them doing well. I mean, they, they have a mixture of aging guys and just mediocre players. They, their offense is awful. Their defense is decent, but that's where their age is in their defense. So, we'll see how they do, but let's look through them, starting with, that's their symbol. I personally like the original one they had, but that's a personal preference. If you like that, have fun, and I still have a hard time calling them the Arizona Coyotes. I still call them the Phoenix Coyotes. I know they haven't been that for like three, four years at least now, but that's how they always knew them, so that's just, if I mess up and call them uh, Phoenix, I'm sorry ahead of time. All right, let's look at their additions. They added John Hayden on a one-year, $750,000 league minimum. All right. Probably going to play fourth line for him, most likely. Tyler Pitlick, $1.75 million per season for two years. He'll probably be a third, maybe be able to slip into the second line if there's injuries. Yuan Larson um, came over from Buffalo. He's got a $1.4 million per season for two years. He's probably about the same thing as Pitlick, probably, I'd say, at best, a third line. I mean, when you're on Buffalo and you have a hard time making the team last year, it doesn't bode well, but then again, they gave you $1.4 million, so I don't think they're going to bury you in the minors that way, so probably third, fourth liner, maybe slip higher if he if there's injuries. And then they had Drayden, Dryden Hunt, uh, forward, 700000 for a year, so Outside of Tyler Pitlick, I don't think there's anybody worth a whole lot to get excited about there. And Pitlick, he was good last year, but I mean, I don't know. We'll see what his real ceiling is this year. We'll see if he can continue what he did or just be a wash. We'll see. Major subtractions. They had three pretty big forward ones. They had... Taylor Hall, who signed in Buffalo. I mean, they made that big deal for him last year. They tried the hardest to sign him. Could not do it. So, that hurts. I don't know if that necessarily makes them a bad team for losing him, but it definitely doesn't help them either. And you got Vinny Henestroza. Went to Florida. That one, he was a solid third-line forward who could slip into, like, the second, maybe even first with injury, so that one hurts a bit. And Brad Richardson, he was their third-line center, and the guy was probably one of their best penalty killers, so that one's going to hurt a bit to lose. He went to Nashville as well, sorry. They re-signed Kyle Capo Bianco. I know you're saying who is that. I think he played a few games during the season last year, a defender, so not that exciting for who they re-signed. Now, their projected cap hit, it says $84 million, which is about $2 million over. And their projected long-term injury reserve used, it says two point seven, but they have Marion Hosa, who's going to be like, I think he's five and a half this year on his last year of his contract. So, I think that'll help him out. Give him a little bit of wiggle room, we'll see. I don't think it'll help that much, but it will a little bit. So, Clayton Keller, I believe this is the first year of his new $7.15 million contract at 22 years old. So, making pretty good money for his age, and he's a pretty good player. Problem is, I'm not sure he has a whole lot to help him out. I mean, you look at the offense, where, where's the offense going to come from? Phil Kessel was next to non-existent last year. Stepan's been hurt most of the last two, three seasons. I mean, when he's been there, he's been helpful offensively, but... He's also a UFA after this year, so his six and a half million will come off. That's pretty much a guarantee. I don't think he's going back, although he could resign. But I don't think he's going to resign for the same amount. I mean, Nick Schmaltz he can provide some. Christian Dvorak a little bit. Pitlick a little bit. Lawson Kraus eh, a little bit. Yuan Larson. I mean, he can make it on Buffalo. Can score a dang goal for the life of him outside of. Um, I saw Jack Eichel last year. So, I mean, even Jeff Skinner couldn't score a goal last year, and that guy had like 40-odd some goals a year before, so you can't score there. I'm not sure you're going to get any better in uh, Arizona. 
Christian Fisher, I believe. Well, I believe he was the one who was out most of last year. Or was that Dvorak? One of those two was out pretty much all last season. So, I mean, he might be able to provide something, but if you missed the entire previous year, he's going to be catching up. I mean, Barrett Hayden, that's one of their top prospects. He probably will make it, and who knows? He might have a decent year. He might not. You'll see. We'll see. I'm sorry. Now for their RFAs after this year, they got Connor Garland, John Hayden, and Dryden Hunt. Two of those they just signed. Connor Garland's been there for a little while now, and really just has not lived up to what they thought he was going to be. But we'll see. Who knows? He might. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe this is coming out of his shell here. So, I mean, that forward group, not super exciting. Defensively, they're going to have a lot of problems out there this year. Because after this year, they've only got Oliver ekman Larson and Jacob Chitron signed following this year. Because you got Alex Goligoski. Uh, like I said, this is where most of their age you're going to see it. Is Goligoski, Jalmerson, and Demare. Goligoski's 35. Still can provide a little bit here and there, but I mean, he's at the downturn side of his career, not the offensive dynamo like he. He had a few good offensive years back in the day, but I don't think he's there anymore. He can still provide some, but he's not what he used to be. Then he's a UFA at the end of the year. Nicholas Jalmerson, amazing when he was with Chicago, but, I mean, you're playing with Duncan Keith and Brent Seabrook and, who else that, Brian Campbell and some of the others that they had. I mean, you're, you're going to look good. But, I mean, he's been a solid defender. He's not going to provide offense. That's a guarantee. Now, he may kick in a couple of goals and, like, five, six assists a year. That's probably about all he's really going to do, especially now at 33, probably going on 34. UFA at the end of the year as well. Jason Demer, youngest of those three, he's 32, and he will be a UFA out there this year. He missed... I want to say three-fourths a year or half of the year last year due to injury. I mean, when he was playing at the beginning of the year, he actually looked really good. So who knows, he could, he could still be in his prime for another year or two, but we'll see what the injury does to him. He's a UFA at the end of the year, too. Jo uh, Jordan Osterley, good fifth, sixth guy. So he'll be UFA. Ilya, oh God, I'm going to have to try and say that. Lubushkin? I'm going to say, I could be wrong, but hey, maybe I got it right. You never know. He's 26. I mean, I, I don't recall his name. I know he played a few games last year, but he's a UFA at the end of the year. $1 million. Who cares for a 6-7 defender? Go for it. I mean, all the talk this this off, that this past offseason was about Oliver ekman Larson and where they're going to trade him and what were they going to get. I mean, the big one was Boston. It seems like Boston was the closest to getting him. But he said after free agency started, no more trade talk. Because he has that full no movement clause, so it's all up to him. If he says no, it's over. They aren't going to be able to do anything unless you change his mind. Which, who knows, trade deadline, if this team is as bad as I think they're going to be, then he may change his mind then, and they're going to get a heck of a package to get him. So it might help him, but it's going to hurt them in the short term too. And that's their defense. Goalies, they got Kemper and Ronta. I mean, you know what you're going to get from him. Ronta probably hurt half the year like usual, and Darcy Kemper is going to stand on his head. That's what it's been the last two years. So, <laughs> I mean, they who else was it? Aiden Hill, I think, is their, their third goalie who comes up when Ronta's injured. So, we'll see. I mean, like I said, they're a grab bag. I mean, with the new divisions they're talking about, throwing in St. Louis, Colorado, and Dallas into that Pacific Division with already Vegas up there. I mean, chances are Arizona is going to be better than the California teams. I know they'll be better than Anaheim. Mean, Anaheim's going to be awful. L.A., I mean, their young guys have to really be good this year in order for them to be better than any of those teams, honestly. And San Jose, I think they'll do better than they did last year, but I'm not going to think they're going to do much better. They're going to still be a bad team, I think. Just like Arizona, I think maybe like the fifth place team in this division, if it is the way they're talking about. I don't see 
them beating out Vegas. I don't see them beating out Colorado, Dallas, St. Louis. Barring any of those four teams getting serious injuries, I mean, they may sneak in, and uh, if they do a play-in round again, they may sneak in that way. And as you can see down here for their salary cap as well, you got Marion Hosa, 5.275, and he's a free agent after this year, but we all know he's not coming back, so he's going to be running off on the long-term injury reserve. That'll save them some of that cap space. They're paying for Michael Grabner for this year, 833000 Next year, $1.25 million. And then he's off the books. So, that's where we're at. Oh, I forgot to say, Ronta is a UFA out there this year. I mean, out of their UFAs, I don't really see them signing it better than maybe Goligoski because he'll be probably 36 by next season. At 36, not many teams are going to be out there going, yeah, let's sign him to a big contract. It's worthwhile. He doesn't have that much to provide to justify that kind of contract. I'm sorry. He's probably going to take a pay cut of at least half to stay on Arizona of all teams. But he could also try and go take a cheaper like $1 million contract and go play for Dallas where he started. Who knows? Since Dallas seems to like to bring in all the older guys in the last few years. So go for it, right? Heck, bring in half of their defense. Why not? I mean, that's where we're at, so or where they're at, not we, sorry. Non-roster forwards, you can see here, I mean, there's, of all the guys I see there, I don't see any other than maybe Aiden Hill, and Barrett Hayden, and Jan Hanek, Yannick, Hunt, yeah, Hanek, I believe is how you say it. I mean, there's Victor Soderstrom, and their defender, he probably will end up playing next year, he'll probably play another year in Sweden, my guess. I mean, I don't see anybody that just screams great offensive potential, great defensive potential, other than, like I said, Barrett Hayden, fifth overall in 2018. He may be there this year and do really good. Jan Hanek, I think, is going to do better than everybody thinks. From what I've heard about the guy, I've never seen him play personally, but I don't watch the European leagues, so... Victor Soderstrom, I'm hearing good things about him out of Sweden, but he's 19, drafted 11th overall last season. I think you may give him another year or two, probably in Sweden, is my guess. Because this year, I mean, like, like you saw, their defense is built this year. So, I mean, I don't think they're going to bring in a young guy to replace these guys that are making like three, four, five million dollars. I don't see the point in that. Let them finish out last year. Because if your team's terrible, get a better pick, right? And plus, if you have a playing round, I think you're going to play the older guys that have been there before instead of the young guy, unless he has... I mean, unless he pulls off something like, uh, like a Kale McCarr and comes in and scores like 18 points in the playoffs. I don't think McCarr did that, but... Oh, he did this last year, I think. But the previous year, he came in and had like 9 points in like 14 games. So... <laughs> Maybe you're lucky. You never know. But defenders usually aren't that way. And Kale McCarr, I believe, was 21? Or no, maybe he was 19. I don't know. I have to look at him when we get to Colorado. Here's the D men in their non roster area. You got like Aaron Ness. I've heard his name before, so he's probably going to be like an 8th, ninth defender. There's Victor Soderstrom. I think he's going to keep playing in the minors. Or not minors, in the European leagues. Aiden Hill's your backup if your backup gets injured or if your starter gets injured. He'll come up and do that. He's an RFA at the end of the year. I mean, you got Ness, who's a UFA, Mayo, Deneen, and Gross are RFAs. So, and once again, thank you to Cat Friendly for providing this, or they didn't provide the information, but putting the information out there and, and letting us use it. It's good information they got up there. Go check them out. All right, their 2020 draft, they had to forfeit their first and second, I believe. No, no, first and second. Was this guy fourth? 111? Yeah, fourth round, he was. Yeah, so they, they gave up their first, second, and third round picks because of their, their practices of cheating on talking to players, I believe it was. I'd have to look exactly what it was, but... With the way their former GM kind of screwed them over, 
I think I'd be pissed at the guy, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised that their owner sues the hell out of that guy. I wouldn't blame him, and honestly, I think uh, everybody would agree he deserves it. You leave him the way you did, and you screw him over with all the draft picks, did not leave them in a good place at all. Their first pick of the 2020 draft was number 111. They picked Mitchell Miller, which this one is a controversial pick. I mean, the things, from what I read of what he did, and why they renounced the pick, I understand it was grotesque, but at the same time, it's like, if you don't give someone a chance to change, you're never going to let them change. I mean, this kid got kicked out everything for it. I mean, like I said, I understand, I do. What he did was horrible, because I work with special needs kids all the time, and seeing that, I would have been ticked off, and I was ticked off when I read about it. But I also believe that people have a chance to redeem themselves. And he, from what I understand, he did not, he did a half-hearted apology and never even gave it to the family directly. And that's where the problem lies. So I understand why they renounced the pick. And honestly, I agree with it. But like I said, you got to give someone a chance to redeem themselves too. But he'll never get that. And now he's got to go find another job and find another college and find something else to do with his life. Not that he probably would have played in the NHL anyways, being a fourth-round pick, chances were probably less than 5%, but you never know, and that was their top pick. So now their top pick is number 142, Carson Bantle. Then they pick 173, Phil Barkland, 192, Elliot Ekfjard. I believe is how you say that. I could be incorrect. It could also be Kefjard. I'm not sure. Depends on where he's from. Number 204 is Ben McCartney. So, they're not going to probably get any help from this draft, or the next one. Because as you can see, next year they have no first round, and no third round, and no seventh round. They have a second round pick, they have two fourths, a fifth, and a sixth. Because they're still forfeiting the first round pick from this year. I believe they previously traded the third and seventh. I believe that is correct, yes. Did they trade it first for Taylor Hall? I don't think they did. All right, but that's where they stand with their picks. Now the forward lineups. They got their first line is Lawson Kraus, Derek Stepan, and Clayton Keller. I am not screaming for joy in that lineup. I mean, they could also move Kraus down to second line, move Kessel up to first, and slip Keller up to left wing because Keller's left or right winger, and have that one, which sounds a bit better. But like I said. Kessel didn't have a great year last year. So, I'm not holding out hope for this offense. I mean, second line, Connor Garland, Christian, Christian Dvorak, and Phil Kessel. Yeesh. Third line, Johan Larson, Nick Schmaltz, and Tyler Pitlick. Two of those three are brand new to the team. Fourth line, Dryden Hunt, John Hayden, and Christian Fisher. Technically, if Christian Fisher is the one I think it is that missed pretty much all last year in like the last two, three games in the play-in round, that's basically a whole new, all three of those guys are new to the team, and I'm not sure Hunt and Hayden are going to provide a whole lot. Otherwise, their teams would have signed them. All right, defense, you got Ekman, Larson, Demare, who I'm sure they'll do fine together as long as Demare can stay healthy. Jacob Chitron and... Alex Golagoski, I mean, they'll be good, but, I mean, Golagoski's going on 36. We'll have to see how much more he's got in the tank. Jordan Osterley and Nicholas Yalmerston as the fifth six. So, I mean, it's a solid-looking defense. The offense is terrible. The goalies look solid. So their defense is what is going to win them games, if they win. Scratches, they got Michael Chabot. Chabot? Uh, I know we've seen him before on a few different teams, I believe Philly and Vancouver for sure. Maybe another one. I think actually Columbus, not Philly. Or did he play on Philly too? It was at least Columbus and Vancouver. Vancouver for sure. I remember seeing him there. Let's in Fashing and Aaron Ness. Aaron Ness, yeah, he came from Philly as well, I believe. All right, non-roster players forwards. You can see how some like their AHL team might look with some of these guys. The loaned ones are the ones who are in the minors or in Europe, where they are. 
non-roster players. You got all these guys, and I don't believe all these are. Uh, some of these, most of these, are probably still in the juniors, playing in Europe, or just playing in the minors on a cheap contract. Like Ryan McGregor, there, 21. I believe he is ineligible for junior now. And David Tindek, a goalie there, he's 21, so those two are the only ones signed. And then you got a couple of guys down right here, Langhammer, Merrick Langhammer, the goalie, RFA in 2018. Oh, wow, okay, so he's a European who has not signed a contract, and I believe he, they still own his rights, but he hasn't gone anywhere. Same with Emil Pedersen. Uh, he's a 26-year-old forward, just like that guy was a 26-year-old goalie. Then you got Billy Sari Sari from Finland, 2020 RFA. So he's RFA now, hasn't signed. So that's where we're at. Why do I hear my phone go out? No. All right. Top prospects: Barrett Hayden. 20 games last year in the NHL, 4 points. So I think he'll play a lot more and get more points, hopefully. And 5 points in 5 games in the AHL. So, he's their top prospect. And he was 5th overall 2018, so hopefully it works out for him. No, he, was he 2018 2019? He was 2018. Victor Soderstrom is the 2019 draft pick, 11th overall. 16 points in 35 SHL games, which... Even I know, I don't watch SHL, but I know that 16 points by a defender at, what was he, 19 years old this year, so he's probably 18 years old when he played most of those games. That's pretty dang good for a defender over in Sweden. That is pretty good. So we'll see if it translates, but that's not bad at all. And you got Kyle Capo Bianco. One point in nine games in the NHL, so he might come up when there's injuries. And 37 points in 42 AHL games. Jan Yannick, he had 56 points in 27 OHL games. That looks pretty good, because I believe he was a European transfer. That's why he only played 27 games, is that he was injured. And Matthias McKelly, he had 30 points in 43 Liga games. Not bad, but that's their prospects, and... I don't know how well that's going to go. You got Ivan Pro, uh, Prosvetov. Goalie. He had 27 AHL games last year. 14-10-1. Lane Peterson. 34 points in 37 AHL games. So he may get some time this year. We'll see. Mike Callahan. 28 points in 34 NCAA games. Defender. And Braden Burke. 52 points in 51 AHL games. I think he'll probably slip into a few games this year for the big team, so we'll see, but that's, I mean, you never know with prospects, they could be amazingly good or amazingly bad, so those guys might come up and do an incredible job and make them look good and make me look bad for saying they're going to probably be bad. I don't think Arizona's going to do well, especially with the changing of the divisions this year if they go the way everybody has been told they're probably going to go. Because I don't see Arizona being better than Vegas, Golden Knights, the Colorado Avalanche, the Dallas Stars, or the St. Louis Blues. I do not see them being better than them. But I do see them being better than at least L.A. and Anaheim. Probably San Jose too, but I think it's between San Jose and Arizona as to who gets that fifth spot in the division. So we'll see. But there you go. That's what I think about what's going to happen with Arizona this year. And... <laughs> Like I said, it's all a guessing game, and who knows when the league's going to start, because we keep hearing it was mid-December originally, and then it's early January. Now it's mid-January, and they still haven't signed anything, but rumors are saying they're going to get it done this week. We will see, but that's what we've been told so far. All right, everybody. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, and... Make sure to hit the notifications button so you catch every single video I put out from here on out. And make sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, and I will see you next video. Bye, everybody. Oops, sorry. New update.